Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Nuts and Bolts of National Voter Registration Day 2017. My name is Julian Johansson. I'm Director of Research and Training here at Nonprofit Vote. If you're unfamiliar with us, Nonprofit Vote partners with America's nonprofits to help the people they serve participate and vote. We are a leading source of training, materials, and other resources for nonprofits doing nonpartisan voter engagement work. We are very fortunate uh, to be joined today by Brenda Barron, the manager of National Voter Registration Day, Amber McReynolds, clerk and recorder of the Denver Elections Division, that's city and county, uh, Lindsay Trico, director of policy and advocacy at United Way Worldwide. Thank you all for joining us today. Before we dive into the presentation, there are a couple of housekeeping items that I, I did want to um, mention quickly. First, if you'd like to ask questions during today's webinar, you can use the chat box that appears on your sc screen, or you can um, tweet your questions to hashtag NPVWebinar. Uh, we'll be monitoring your uh, tweets on both the um, National Voter Registration Day channel and on the Nonprofit Vote channel as well. So please feel free to, um, to chat your questions to us or to tweet your questions to us uh, at any time during the webinar today. We'll pause at a couple of points during the webinar to take your questions, and then there will be additional time uh, to take your questions at the end of the webinar today. Second, um, in a few days' time, I will be sending all of you a follow-up email um, with links that you can use to download today's PowerPoint presentation, to download the audio file, or to watch the webinar on Nonprofit Vote's YouTube channel. I'll also include any links that we mention in today's presentation. Third, we are live tweeting the webinar. Um, so if you've never taken part in a live tweet and you'd like to do that, just log into Twitter, um, search for hashtag NPVWebinar, uh, and then click on the Latest tab um, so that you can see uh, questions as they appear. All right. So when it comes to takeaways, um, today we are focusing on the nuts and bolts. So we'll be talking about things like um, signing up as a partner, registering an event, um, receiving your free materials, um, thinking about what your event will look like. Next week, we will focus um, more specifically on how to successfully carry out a voter registration event on National Voter Registration Day. So next week is when we'll get into tactics and best practices and things of that nature. Um, today, you know, we'll begin by uh, talking a little bit about um, what National Voter Registration Day is all about, and we'll move on to talk about um, how to access all of the resources um, that we have available for you guys. So the agenda today um, begins with what's it all about, um, moves on to how does it all work, and ends with how will we help you. That's where we talk about um, some of the resources um, that we have available um, for all of you. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to Lindsay to talk a little bit about um, what National Voter Registration Day is all about. Great. Well, thank you, Julian, and hello, everyone. Again, my name is Lindsay Tirico. I'm the Director of Policy and Advocacy at United Way Worldwide. And on behalf of United Way, we are delighted to partner with Nonprofit Vote on this year's National Voter Registration Day. We believe that nonprofits can play a critical role in helping people become in active and engaged citizens which ultimately advances our mission to empower the people we serve and build stronger communities. So what is National Voter Registration Day? Well, this story began in 2008 when it was discovered that 6 million Americans did not vote in the election. Many reported that they missed a registration deadline or they just didn't even know how to register. We know that a healthy democracy requires the participation of all of its citizens. Those six million missing voices make a real difference to our public discourse and public policy outcomes. What's particularly troubling is that those who missed the registration deadline or just didn't know how to register are not a representative sample of America. They are often young people, they're often low-income earners, 
and they are also members of the Asian American and Latino communities. So in response to this problem, a group of civic engagement organizations came together with secretaries of state to establish a nonpartisan day dedicated to voter registration. And thus, National Voter Registration Day was born. The holiday has been embraced by the National Association of Secretaries of State, the National Association of State Election Directors, and has been growing ever since. Who are the faces behind National Voter Registration Day? Well, this year we are honored to uh, have two amazing Secretary of State uh, that are leading the steering committee, uh, Secretary of State John Merrill, who is the Alabama Secretary of State, and Secretary of State uh, uh, Steve Simon, who is the Secretary of State of Minnesota. Together, they are leading a steering committee made up of such organizations as the National Disability Rights Network, the National Association of State Election Directors, uh, Democracy Fund, Google, uh, United Way Worldwide, and the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officers, and many others. So you may be wondering, does voter registration even matter in 2017? I mean, it's not even a, a presidential election year. Well, the short answer is yes, it does matter. You may have heard of the phrase, all politics is local. When too few people elect local leaders, a small fraction of residents can have an outsized influence in decisions about issues like schools, parks, housing, libraries, police, and transportation. There are more than half a million local elected officials in the United States, and their decisions affect all of our lives. If more Americans participate in local elections and local elections are set up to encourage broad participation, local officials will be held accountable to every single person they represent. Yet we know that voter turnout in local elections is often in the single digits. In 15 of the 30 most populous cities in the U.S., Voter turnout in mayoral elections is less than 20% on average. In elections for city council, that number drops significantly. Boston's 2015 city council election saw a turnout of just 14% of registered voters. And when you include eligible but unregistered voters in the denominator, that figure drops even more. Why is turnout so low in local elections? Well, one reason is that they don't get a lot of attention. As you all probably remember from the recent presidential election, voters are inundated by information about when, where, and how, and who to vote for. That's not the case in off-cycle elections. That means that many voters are unfamiliar with candidates and the issues on the ballot. They may not even know an election is taking place. A second reason turnout is low is that local candidates and campaigns don't have the resources to mail or call or text or knock on the door of every single voter. Many people never hear from a candidate or a campaign. And that's where we all come in. On Tuesday, September 26, mark that date on your calendar, that's Tuesday, September 26, we will be out there making sure that everyone who will listen knows that they need to register to vote for the upcoming November election. And as a side note, you may be wondering why we focus on voter registration and not voter mobilization, which is calling voters or knocking on their doors. Well, that's because registering to vote is one of the first steps to becoming an active participant in our democracy. Also, because many people don't know that they aren't registered to vote. Many people are unaware that when they move, they need to update their voter registration, and that's a big problem because in any given five-year period, 45% of eligible voters move from one address to another. And guess who moves most frequently? It is young voters and low-income earners. So when we say you can make a difference, we aren't kidding. Since 2012, our partners have registered 1.4 million voters. That's 1.4 million voters. We've partnered with more than 4,000 
individual businesses, nonprofits, and governmental organizations. Our premier partners now include organizations like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and a growing number of national nonprofits like United Way, the National Disability Rights Network, the Military Office Association of America, and I could keep going. You can visit the website to see a full list of 2016's partners, and a list of the 2017 partners will be up very soon. So that is some information on where we've been with National Voter Registration Day. You're going to learn more in this webinar about where we're going with this year's um, event, and I will now turn it back over to Julian to talk about how it all works. Thank you, Lindsay, very much. Um, so um, that was some great information. So I'm about to launch into something that is a bit drier, so I apologize in advance um, for subjecting you guys to some of this drier information. Um, if you aren't familiar with uh, National Voter Registration Day from, from prior years, um, we take a, I guess what you could call a two-pronged approach. Um, on the one hand, our partners and volunteers um, through our field presence, bring voter registration um, into our communities across the country in every state. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, with partners who um, have media and communications capabilities, we lift up um, voter registration and participation um, in our democracy in whatever communications channels are available to us, be they radio, television, um, online and social media, especially in social media. Um, so, so we are simultaneously um, attacking voter registration on, on both of those fronts. For a quick overview of what that means for, for each of you, um, the process can be broken down into five steps. Uh, first, you need to sign up as a partner. And this is true even if you have signed up in previous years. Um, you do need to, uh, I guess you could say, re-up um, for National Voter Registration Day um, each and every year. Um, so if you have been a, a partner in the past um, but have not yet signed up in 2017, please do make sure that you go to the National Voter Registration Day uh, website and, um, and sign up today. Second, um, we will ask you uh, separately, once you've become a partner, to register an event if you plan to hold an event. Um, so this is a little bit confusing for some people. You know, we, we have a, a, a partner sign-up process where we ask you for, for some uh, pretty basic um, contact information. And then we have a separate process where you ask us to tell us more about um, your event. Uh, we'll be getting in touch with you uh, fairly soon um, with an email about how to um, register your event. So expect to see that uh, from us in the near future. Step three, you'll receive some free materials from us. We send every partner who signs up um, some free stickers and posters, um, and we also, uh, through an online store, make additional materials available to, to you. Um, fourth, and most importantly, on National Voter Registration Day, Tuesday, September 26th, you'll hold your event. Uh, and then finally, step five, we will ask you to tell us about how your event went. So, Step one, signing up. Um, pretty simple. Just go to nationalvoterregistrationday.org. There is a partner sign-up link on the home page, which you're looking at right here. Uh, just click on that link. You'll be taken to a form that asks you for some pretty straightforward contact information, uh, and then ask a couple of additional questions about whether you plan to hold uh, an event on National Voter Registration Day and or support National Voter Registration Day uh, through your communications. Um, we'll ask you a couple other questions about um, whether you've done voter registration in the past, how many people you think you'll be able to register if you're planning to hold an event. When it comes to events, um, we have not really advertised this yet. Um, as I said, we will be getting in touch with all of you with a separate communication about events, but you can register your event now um, by clicking on the uh, events menu item in the partner drop-down menu. Um, again, you'll be asked for um, some pretty straightforward information about when and where you'll be holding your event. There are um, additional areas where you can um, 
create an email that you can send to uh, potential volunteers or um, uh, other participants in your event, um, and a, a whole host of other tools that will help you to um, carry out a, a successful event. Step three, free stuff. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we'll be sending all of you some, some posters and stickers. In a couple of days, we'll be sending you an email uh, just confirming your mailing address uh, and asking you if you're interested in receiving um, materials in other languages. Um, we have materials in um, Chinese, Korean, um, Tagalog, Vietnamese, Spanish. Um, so uh, there, there are um, a, a lot of options available um, for, for communities that would like to take advantage of those. If you reply to that email that we send you by August 21st, you'll be in the first of three rounds of mailings that will be going out of our uh, fulfillment house. Um, if you miss that August 21st deadline, but you do reply um, by September 5th, you'll have replied in time to receive uh, materials in other languages, um, like the languages I just mentioned. Um, if you do want to receive materials in, um, in Chinese and Korean and Tagalog and um, Vietnamese and Spanish, you do need to reply to us by um, September 5th. So do keep that, uh, that deadline in mind. The email that we'll be sending to you in a couple of days um, confirming your mailing address, if you miss um, the, the first deadline, we'll send that email again. Um, so you will see it more than once. The final cutoff for receiving materials is September 11th. Um, so if you miss the first two deadlines, you still have until September 11th um, to uh, respond to our confirmation email uh, about your materials. So each of, those, um, each of those deadlines comes with an estimated arrival day. The first one is August 30th for the first round. That's when you'd be receiving your materials. Um, the next one, September 12th, and the one after that, September 18th. Uh, so we aim to get, them, uh, to get these materials to you as quickly as we can. In addition to the um, relatively small number of posters and stickers that we'll be sending to you um, for participating. And, and the number you get depends a little bit on how many people you think you'll be able to register, but it won't be more than um, 10 posters and 100 stickers. Um, if you need additional materials, we do have an online store that is going live later this week. Uh, and that store also has um, three rounds of, of mailing. If you order items um, from our store between the 15th and the 21st of August, you'll be in that first round of mailings uh, and receive your materials by August 30th. In the second round, the 22nd to the 31st, if you order during that window, you'll receive your, your materials by September 12th. In the final round, if you order between September 1st and 7th, you'll receive your materials by the 18th. We have um, basically um, set the prices of the items to be as cheap as we can possibly make them. Uh, so we are, are charging literally just the cost that it, um, that it cost us to manufacture the items and the um, shipping and fulfillment charges that the fulfillment house charges us. Um, so there's no, uh, no markup on, on any of those items. So if you need you know, 1,000 stickers in Spanish and 5,000 stickers in English, um, we can accommodate that through our, through our online store. I will be sending you more information about that as well, so um, you can um, keep your, your eyes peeled for, for that email as well. So th that's the, the basic um, how-to um, when it comes to signing up, registering your event, and, and receiving your materials. Before we move on to talk about um, events, um, this might be a good time to, um, to ask uh, any logistical questions that you might have about um, uh, how you'll receive your items or um, what you need to do to, to, um, to sign up or, or register your event. So um, Brenda, I'm not sure if you noticed while I was speaking if people had chatted in any questions um, of a sort of logistical nature. Thanks, Julian. Yeah. Um, I'm taking a look. I'm not that I, I noticed a couple people. 
you you might I'm I'm new at this this web webinar thing, so I, <laughs> I so that's where you hear the pause trying to figure this out. Um, so Julian, you see a few questions in there, right? Yeah, you know, a, a common question we get is just, you know, will I get the PowerPoint and um, a, a link to the recording of the webinar? Everyone who's attending today or who RSVP'd but wasn't able to make it today will get a follow-up email um, with a link that you can use to download the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'll include any links that were mentioned during the presentation in that follow-up email, and there will also be a, a link to a recording um, of the entire webinar that you can view on our YouTube channel. Uh, so for, for people who are wondering about that, um, yes, you will be getting um, all of the materials related to the webinar. All right, I see a lot of great questions, um, but go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Julian. You flag them. Um, so so I, I see a, a lot of great questions here, but um, a lot of them um, – oh, here's a great one. Okay, I've done the sign-up, but I don't recall um, hearing back from you. Did I miss anything important? So when you sign up as a partner, um, you do automatically receive a confirmation email. Um, so you should have immediately after signing up received um, an email with some information in it um, if you did not receive that or if it was somehow flagged as spam and, and, um, and, and captured in, in some folder somewhere, um, please do feel free to get in touch with us. You can email us at info at nationalvoterregistrationday.org um, or you can email info at nonprofitvote.org uh, and I can get you um, all of the content that was in that email. But each of you, when you, when you um, signed up as a partner, should have received um, a confirmation email with some additional uh, information in it. Good question. And Julian, I also right. see another one here that's good is, well, they're all good, but one that we can take care of right now is when the how-to webinar will take place. Um, we were not aware of yes. the second session. Right. There's a number of questions in here that um, definitely um, are ones that we are going to address on August 24th. Um, yeah. Um, from the yeah. same time, from 2 to 3 Eastern time, that um, a lot of some of the more logistical questions will be, will be handled there. Great, yeah. So, so um, yeah, I do, I do see one, um, you know, um, how, who do we request materials um, in Chinese and other Asian languages from? We'll be sending out an email to each of you um, that, uh, both confirms your, your mailing address and also inquires about whether you'd like um, materials in other languages. There will be a link to a form in that email. Um, when you click on the link, you'll be taken to a form that asks you um, if you'd like to get stickers or posters in other languages, and if so, what mix of, of um, English or other languages you'd like to receive. Uh, in addition, you will be able to order um, materials in other languages, large quantities of materials in other languages from our online store. So keep an eye out for that email which will be coming to you in a couple of days. Um, simultaneously our online store should be going live and when it comes to large quantities of materials like a thousand stickers or a hundred posters, um, you'll be able to order those on that online store. All right, so that, that's, those are some great questions and, and I'll, I'll look out for um, for other sort of logistical questions like that to um, answer later on. But right now I think I should, um, in the interest of time, probably move on and hand things over to you, Brenda. Well, thanks, Julian. Um, hi, everybody. So I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk through about our events and what actually September 26th you know, is going to look like in your communities. And the great thing is, is that the events that are held across the country are as unique as the 4,000 partners who have been involved in National Voter Registration Day over the past six years. And, um, and, and so there's no perfect event or no right event. It's what's right for your community and, and who you're working with and, and, and who it is you're trying to register to vote um, in your community. And so that's the first thing I want to put out there. It's like let creativity flow and that. But, but knowing, knowing that there is a lot of, um, you know, um, different communities, w w what could this possibly look like? So one of the things I'll 
guys will give you is to think about um, what kind of event do you want? So one of the first questions to think about is how is this also, how is National Voter Registration Day going to you know, register voters, but how is it also going to build the capacity of your organization so you can continue to engage more people or um, connect with new communities or other goals that your organization might have? So that might inform some of the other logistics around an event. So for example, when we say public or private, is it something that you want to hold at you know, a library or do you want to go really public and sit outside of the Walmart um, to get folks to sign up? Um, if you're on college campuses, um, are there events going on? And also, um, you know, some, some, some of you I know, you know, organize concerts or other type of events that speak to your capacities as an organization and the interests of the folks that you're trying to engage. So what are some, what are some creative ideas to pull together um, in your area? So it, it, it can be a variety of, you know, 100 people out there, you know, having a party to two people at a table um, outside of your, your health clinic or outside of your library or whatever. It also, when thinking about public or private, you, your organization may not even have the capacity to have a bunch of volunteers who are going to go out on the street to organize an event. And that is, that's, that's part of the beauty of the, the, the bit of events that we can do is that you might want to first look at you know, your, your colleagues or your leaders or your volunteers and ask them if they're registered to vote. I've worked on a number of campaigns and with organizations over the years where we register people to vote only to find out that some of my coworkers and leaders that are doing the registering aren't even registered to vote themselves. Um, and so sometimes the best place to look is just inside, and that's an, you know, an easy list, and it's still an event, right? Like you're still trying to bring together your coworkers um, in ways that are really impactful, um, that can really contribute to National Voter Registration Day. So, so look at that. Um, also think about, is this, goes back to your organizational goals is in-house only or outside volunteers. Do you want to bring in new people to come to your, um, to your organization to volunteer? Do you want to find opportunities for existing volunteers? So those are questions that what's great is we have a great organizing toolkit on the, on the web um, under at nationalvoterregistrationday.org um, partner toolkits and you can where we really walk through a lot of these questions, right? So I would say look at that. Then also when it says um, scale and venue, we have the scale part of it. What I would recommend too is if you do want to do something larger, if you do want to outreach because you're a small organization or this is new to your larger organization, think about who in your community you might be able to partner with. Um, we have a lot of um, county and local election offices that, that sign up for National Voter Registration Day or can sign up for National Voter Registration Day. There's hundreds, literally, League of Women Voters chapters that have signed up around the country um, to get involved, connect with one of them. There's colleges, high schools, um, libraries. So think about who else might care about voter registration in your community and um, see if they want to work together with you. That then is where scale can come into place. So those are just some ideas to throw out there, but to get sort of the ball rolling for you brainstorming with your, with your colleagues. Um, and there are a few things that we just want to throw out there of what to avoid. The biggest one, because it's the legal one, is partisanship. National Voter Registration Day is a completely nonpartisan holiday. Um, we are not registering Democrats, Republicans, Independents, or any party. We are registering Americans to vote and get engaged in the process. And so if, you know, it's going to be important, one of the things that we're going to provide in the webinar on the 24th is a lot more detail about how to respond when you're actually, when you're running a voter registration drive, but to know that you're not, that you're not registering for a certain party is really important moving forward in terms of, how you pull together your um, your events and and bringing your bringing your partners um, that is that is very important. Then there's the going it alone, um, or as 
I like to think of it um, skipping your homework part. Avoid skipping your homework on this. There have been a number of amazing questions that have been coming through on the question line about what about formerly incarcerated people, can they vote? What about students who are eight, who are not 18 yet but want to vote? There's a lot. What are the rules in my state? What are the rules in my county? How do I contact this person? Um, some of that stuff, we're not going to dive into that detail today, but that's part of doing the homework. The great thing is, is that we have a homework guide and we have homework resources. And so we're going to get into those resources a little bit later, but to know that it's really important to connect with your local board, um, board of elections or county board of elections and check to see your state um, election voter registration drive rules, which again, we're going to go over in a lot more detail, but they also provide resources and um, they know the rules. So um, you, can, you can work together with them and other organizations like the League that um, who know those rules inside out in your community also. Um, then flaking. Um, flaking, what is that? Flaking is the uh, not showing up um, part of, of it all. Um, it's really exciting to get engaged in this and it's also really easy to have the rest of our lives distract us from actually getting engaged on National Voter Registration Day. So, or from you, if you're a staff person with an organization, you probably have five million other things that are on your plate like all of us do. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. And then it doesn't happen because, well, there's a lot going on. So figure out how to, within your own plan, make enough space and space that's manageable so that you can feel success um, at the end um, of, of the project and know you, you've, you've um, engaged to the best of your current capacity, right? It, um, and then also know that volunteers especially um, have that same pool going on in their lives. So, so being sure that you have um, sort of the, the plan in place and um, resources to train and engage them so that they, um, they do show up. Um, is really, really important. Um, and again, the organizing toolkit that's on the website is um, really walks through this stuff in, in detail, and we could probably do an entire webinar on that if there's enough interest and need on just uh, engaging there. So those are some, some key things to avoid. Um, with, and with careful planning, um, it's, it's um, easy to do, and with tech, checking in on the resources. So then um, the last thing I want to touch on in this particular section is the let us know how it went. Um, basically, this is an opportunity to celebrate what we've done. Um, right now we have, I think there are 1,382 exactly as of this morning, community partners like yourself signed up to take part in National Voter Registration Day. And you may be the only one in your community doing an event. You might be one of five in your community doing an event. And that's going to change how you, you know, how you feel about the impact that you've had. Some voter registration drives might have five people registered, and that's a really big deal for the location that you're at. Um, and when there's 13 other, 1,300 others getting five, and, or 500 in some cases, because some cities are a lot larger than others, as we know. Um, there's more people to register. Um, that comes together. And so what we will do prior to, um, at least a week prior to National Voter Registration Day, send you a post-holiday survey. So we're going to ask you some key questions about like the number of volunteers, how many did you register, or what was, your, what was the highlight of your event. That way we can compile it all and add to that 1.4 million registered voters that Lindsay um, highlighted earlier in the presentation to show the impact that we've had. At a time when many Americans are feeling very isolated, we're going to be able to show the power that we have by bringing democracy to work. And it's really you um, that are doing that. I mean, there's a few of us on staff that are kind of like, you know, like making some things happen, but it's, it's when the 1,300 plus of you and the volunteers you engage and the 
tens of thousands of people that you're going to register to vote are part of something, um, it's really big. And then you can then email out to your members or your people that you registered to vote even, get back in touch with them and say, hey, you are one of like 100,000 people that registered to vote. You know, that's awesome. And you were part of this big day with Twitter and with Facebook and with Google and everybody else. So that's why the holiday the survey is so important. Um, and I won't, I, won't, I won't harp on that anymore. Um, so on that regard, I want to um, um, transition a little bit to talk about a highlight of, of actual events that have been really awesome. I see there's a lot of great questions coming in. And we're going to pause for questions after our next presentation, which is um, from Amber McReynolds, who is the Director of Elections for the City and County of Denver, Colorado. And Denver, Colorado um, elections have been um, really engaged with National Voter Registration Day over the years, and they're going to share some of their great successes and some of their plans coming up that might help some spark some ideas for some of your work. So, Amber, um, are you on? Yes, I am. Awesome. Hi, hi everyone. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here, and thanks again uh, for the invite to share what we've done. Um, we have been engaged with National Voter Registration Day events for quite a few years now. Um, and I, I can't stress enough, and it was mentioned, it's been mentioned a few times, but um, especially if you're an organization that isn't an election office, check with your local election office as to what they might be planning to do because part of our success has been our partnerships with all of our stakeholders and various groups involved in Denver in doing this work. And we've really tried to collaborate on different events that are happening, um, sharing our materials. We even order, you know, we'll serve as kind of a, a place to order national voter registration materials for partnering organizations. Um, and so we've had a lot of success in sort of coordinating those efforts. Um, the other thing for, for Denver in particular, uh, just to name a few, um, Inspire is a group that focuses on registering um, 16 and 17 year olds in high schools and so they're one of our partners this year. We partner with our Accesso board which is our Spanish language advisory group and you can see on screen we kind of have our I Voted sticker that um, we have a Spanish version of that as well. So we really try to cross promote a lot of our events um, with Accesso as well. And then many other stakeholders, really anyone who is interested in partnering with us or you know, kind of collaborating with us or cross-promoting events on that day, we, we try to do that. Um, events it has been a big thing for us. And the photo that you see on screen um, out in Civic Center Park, which is one of our large parks in, in central Denver, actually really close to our office, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, they have what's called Food Truck Day, um, sort of over the summer and into October. And so since Tuesday always falls on National Voter Registration Day, we always make an effort to have a central uh, booth in the middle of that food truck day. And that, and that day usually attracts a couple, you know, a couple thousands of people that come through. So we've tried to leverage that partnership within the park. And you can see it's an outdoor event. Um, just on the table, you can see some of our promotional items. We have orange and blue footballs for the Broncos. So that's something you can do with your um, local sports organizations, we have sunscreen, chapstick, just different things that people might find useful. And we put our website and our information on there just to get um, more of the, the word out. Um, and we also, with this event, since this is a lunchtime event, um, we've also had radio stations come and broadcast from our booth at this. We've also, um, a couple years ago, we invited uh, an elementary or a primary school group that actually my daughter um, was a part of, and they sang the grand old flag to kind of kick off National Voter Registration Day. And I can't tell you how popular little kids singing are for um, a crowd. So that was really helpful. Um, and so really anything you can do to leverage existing events that are happening in the community that maybe already have a crowd, I think it's a, a, a good way to um, sort of, you know, bring people there that and meet people where they already are, are going. Um, the other uh, couple things with Inspire and some of the other groups that do voter registration in Colorado, they do a lot of specific events at high schools. And so 
where we can, we try to partner with them. At the very least, cross-promote whatever activities they might be doing. Um, and we also, uh, in terms of our other partners, try to cross-promote across city agencies, so like the Department of Safety or the Sheriff's Department or the Marketing Office for the City and County of Denver, the Mayor's Office, they all try to also cross-promote what we're doing and we're very collaborative with the other press information officers in the city and across all of our stakeholder groups to try to get the message out um, about National Voter Registration Day. Um, and this is just shows some of our social media. Um, you can see on the one page we have like a whiteboard where people can write why they think voting is important and then we'll you know, post them on our account or they'll take a selfie of themselves. A um, couple other things, just our Civic Center Eats, is, that's one of the, that's our event in the park with the food trucks. Um, we've done that for quite a few years now and that's gone very, very well. Um, we try to cross promote National Voter Registration Day on our social media platforms. Um, and we also use uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Periscope, Instagram, uh, Snapchat. We set up Snapchat filters for, for various pieces. So try to be really collaborative um, uh, as we go into the event, leading up to the event, and, and cross-promoting the event. Um, and then uh, just another picture of sort of our booth. We also will have voter registration available on paper forms, but we also have an app. Uh, that we use to register voters, and that just helps us kind of monitor how we're doing and tracking and sort of where those take place. Um, on here you can also see some of the hashtags that we use, some specific to Denver, others spe uh, specific to Colorado, and then some that are sort of more national hashtags. So I think um, cross-promoting those, those hashtags uh, reaches more platforms as well. Um, and, then, and you can see the National Voter Registration Day stickers that we have there and some of the other materials that are specific to our office but are also um, the national uh, material as well. Uh, and then for us this year, um, one of the other things that we try to do is we're also trying to leverage National Voter Registration Day as a way for us to um, kind of promote new things that we're doing for the year. So for this year, we're going to be uh, rolling out a new innovation on that day, and we'll have it actually displayed in the Civic Center Park event. And uh, you know, we're kicking it off that day, so we're going to invite all of our stakeholders, press, everything that day in honor of National Voter Registration Day. But it'll also be a way for us to demonstrate our new mobile voting site, and we'll have opportunities for people to actually test out the voting tablets on inside the mobile voting center. Um, right there in the middle of the park. So um, we think that's going to bring a lot of people into it. It's also National Voter Registration Day, so it's just a good way to cross-promote um, both features. Um, there's going to be our local Channel 8 station within the city will be uh, videoing that event, and then we also there's going to be a documentary and there's going to be some other press uh, sort of happening around that uh, particular day as well. Uh, so with that, I think the key things, um, if you haven't yet, check in with your local election office, and if they aren't already a partner, encourage them to be a partner. Um, we have been doing this for many years, and it's a fun thing for our staff, um, and it's a fun way for us to engage with our other partners and just promote voter registration and civic engagement more broadly. Um, I would also encourage you to talk to your schools, um, you know, but I think Overall, just collaborate with the local election offices that might be working because certainly they might already be doing something and it kind of makes sense to sort of collaborate and uh, do various things together. Uh, so with that, I will close out and hand it over for the next piece. Happy to answer questions about anything that we're doing. Thanks, Amber. So um, we could take a one, one um, quick pause. Um, here, because there were just there were, there were a couple questions that um, that were related to um, some things that um, Amber just mentioned. One person was wondering if there will be um, an official sort of Snapchat filter um, for National Voter Registration Day, uh, and the the quick answer is um, we will look into it, um, and we will we will get back to you. We do have um, social media. Um, graphics and and, um, and recommended uh, messages for Facebook and Twitter um, 
uh, and those graphics are available in a variety of languages and, and, and sizes and formats. And we will, we will look into um, Snapchat as well. So uh, we, will, we will follow up with all of you um, uh, when that happens. Um, another question um, that came up was um, whether there's a way for um, organizations that are doing work locally to connect with each other. Um, and th there is. Um, we, um, as I mentioned earlier, we haven't really um, uh, emphasized our, our event uh, creation tool yet, um, and we will be emailing all of you about that in the near future. Um, once you have registered your event, there is a find an event tool um, where you can go and type in your zip code. Um, and you'll see all of the other events um, that have been registered in your area. So you can find other people who are planning to hold events. When it comes to um, uh, just finding other organizations that are partnering in different ways, um, whether they're events or not, in your um, in your city or near you. Um, we're working on that. We don't have anything um, available yet, but we'll let you know um, uh, when or if we're able to do that. Uh, but for events, yeah, there is, there is a, a tool that will allow you to do that. All right, so um, I, we are running pretty late. So um, Brenda, why don't I hand it back to you to talk about resources? That sounds great, Jillian. Thanks. Yeah, so we're going to... Um, move over to resources right now. I'm going to get this cute little boy off the screen here and go over to resources. So um, resources. We have, as Julian has said, free resources. That's what I love about National Voter Registration Day. There's a lot that you don't have to pay for. So first to reiterate, you know, you, first you have to register on the website um, and then respond and respond to our email that Julian will be sending, or probably it will come from me, but that we'll be sending very shortly. Um, and then we send you um, free posters and stickers. Um, if you're registering under 50, 50 or under, you're going to get five, you know, you're, you're going to get about five posters, 50 stickers. If you're going to do a lot more, we send some more. It's all in the details, but know that you get some free stuff. There's also a lot of digital toolkits. Um, we have on the toolkit page, if you haven't been yet during this, this section, um, check it out. Not only do we have digital assets for um, in English, but we have them in Spanish and um, simple Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, and Tagalog. So those are the languages that we have. I've seen that question pop up about some other languages. Those are the languages we offer um, this year. Um, so um, wanted to you know, check that out. And we'll be sending out you know, updates in that leading up to National Voter Registration Day. And communica communications collateral, what we mean by that is we're going to be having some updated sample press releases, um, as well as they're going to be translated, um, and some other tools. So just um, some other tools that we just need, we're still figuring out the plans for, so um, you'll get them um, as they come. So keep your email open. Um, so just as a sort of quick thing on the posters, these are the posters. So you'll see they're, they're double-sided posters, which is really kind of cool. Um, you can, and there's spots for you to write details on each side. So um, in the bo blank boxes, you can write you know, details of your upcoming event prior to National Voter Registration Day. And then on National Voter Registration Day, you can flip the poster over and write some detail as to why folks should vote or what's coming up. Um, if you'd like to, in advance of getting your free shipment of materials, you can go online and download these, again, in, in all of the language that, languages that we've mentioned. Um, so that's great. Then there's the field toolkit. Um, a lot of the stuff that we went through around events, a lot of that is in there. It's a really comprehensive toolkit. Um, recommend you go through that to find, answer, answer a lot of the questions that are popping up, like, how do I talk to certain um, communities? What's some good messaging? What are some, you know, how do I recruit a volunteer? All of that is all in there. So I encourage you to read through that. Um, and then the media toolkit, same thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a very comprehensive, not quite as long, but very comprehensive um, toolkit in terms of 
timeline of communications, some really great, some really useful drafted sample emails that you can send out to your volunteers and your members, as well as some of the social media graphics and social media posts that um, complement some of the also online social media assets that are in the um, on the website. So social media, you can see this is a definitely a big communication social media. Um, Tool. Um, so National Voter Registration Day is the full hashtag, as Julian has has mentioned, and um, so that is where you know we'll be pushing that that full hashtag out. Um, and then we also have a Facebook page and our and our Twitter page and our Tumblr page. Um, so please um, tag us and, and and join us and follow us and all those um, everything you can do to social media connect so we can share each other's um, posts and resources. Um, these are just some of the social media um, images that um, are from last year, um, but it gives you an idea of what's to come for this year. But I believe we have some of, the, some of this um, updated yeah, for this those year. Yeah, those are all, all available updated. I apologize, I used the wrong slide there. Um, no, no, yes, no, it's have. fine. No, I, 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 I didn't want to say we definitely had them for this year, but I was, I'm pretty, was pretty sure we did. So yeah, so they're updated um, for the date this year. Um, and then voter reg in your state. This is important. We have a great link on what are the rules in your state. So this is important just to know generally the, the rules in your state. But to reiterate um, and reinforce what Amber said earlier is that, you know, check in with your local um, Board of Election, you know, Elections Office. Not only one for the rules, but also for the resources. I've, um, a, there's definitely a great potential for community connections by working together, and um, they'll also help you figure out some of your goals and, and what, what, what's possible in the community. They, they know best um, how to connect. So, and then if they haven't signed up for National Voter Registration Day yet, they could sign up too, um, and then it can be even more connected, so you'll be building the movement by engaging them. Um, so next steps um, are sign up as a partner. Um, if you haven't yet, please do. If you have thought of some other organizations that you can that you think would be wanting to engage, please send them the link and get them to sign up, and then they'll start getting the emails and the resources and, and everything else. Um, next webinar is September 24th. September, August 24th um, from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And that's really where we're going to go through a lot of like how do you do a voter registration drive? What does this look like? What, what do you need to do? Um, ask lots of questions. We're here to answer them. Um, encourage you first to read through the resources. Um, and then ask questions. Ask questions of us, but also ask questions of folks in your community that you're going to partner with. And then start planning as, as early as possible. Um, we're, now, and then um, here we are. Nothing's wrong with being unsure. Clever people ask the most questions. So we have tons of clever people on this webinar. So Julian, did you want to flag any other questions? Yeah, we, we have a large number. And um, uh, for those who, who have the time to, um, to stay with us for a little longer today, I can um, probably answer most of your questions today, um, although it may require going over time a little bit. Um, so. Uh, one of the questions um, we received is how do um, people access things like the social media graphics and the state-by-state -state voter registration rules um, fact sheets? Um, those resources are available um, on the Partners Tools pages, um, which you can access by going to uh, nationalvoterregistrationday.org, and then under the Partner drop-down menu, um, you'll see an item for Partner Tools. If you click on that, um, you'll arrive on a page um, where you can uh, click to see um, social media uh, graphics, click to um, see the state-by-state -state, um, rules for voter registration fact sheets, um, and see our communications toolkit and our organizers toolkit um, and, and all of the other resources um, that we have. So that's where you would go um, uh, to look for that. Um, 
we have a lot of questions. So um, here's one that um, that our, our audience can um, field. Do you recommend that we con uh, that we connect with our local high school um, or a library that's planning to have um, a voter registration drive on NVRD and the high school is nearby? Um, anybody want to want to um, take that one? Brenda, how about you? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, as much as you can partner with um, folks in your local community, um, do that. You know, I think you know Amber mentioned there's an organization called Inspire. They work with um, local high schools, and they're also um, in our network. So that's a great place. You know, InspireUSA.org. Um, you can see if they you know can connect with a high school if that's where you're interested in. But you likely have the best relationships in those areas. So yeah. Um, Expand your partnership as best you can. Those are great ideas. Great. Another question is, um, how do you go about estimating the number um, of voter registrations you expect to get um, uh, at um, your event? Uh, and this is also from a, a public library that has never done voter registration before. Um, Amber, do you want to do you want to take a swing at that one? Yeah, I think um, I think it definitely depends on kind of I guess what your voter registration rates are within your own communities. I mean, Colorado we we're actually as a state the highest registered state in the country, but we still like especially in Denver we have a high mobility rate. So even if it's not a new registration, a change of address is what we see the most. So um, I think you know I think it really does depend on the community. I would shoot high. Um, one thing, like we have our uh, um, we have our voter registration drive app, and that's what we use in the community with paper. So we kind of never have to worry about running out of paper forms. Um, so if you do have like a state online registration system or anything like that in your state, sometimes it's a better idea to just have iPads available and maybe have paper as well, just so that you are covered um, with everything. So there might be different ways to kind of do that state by state. Um, but I would shoot high because um, you know you don't want to run out. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything that, that Amber just said. And I would also add that um, if, you're, if you're a public library, um, it, it also I think helps to think about the kind of clientele that you attract and, and um, who you get at, at different times and on different days. Um, so, for example, maybe you have, um, you know, a children's story hour and you have parents um, bringing kids. Um, that might be a good opportunity um, to, um, uh, to offer voter registration to those parents. Um, at other times, you know, you may have lower traffic. Certain days or times of day just may be very um, low foot traffic for you. So think about, you know, what your foot traffic is like and, and the kinds of people that are, that are coming in as well. Um, if you have a lot of um, um, older people coming in, they tend to um, have higher registration rates than, than younger people, for example. So um, those are some other variables that you might want to consider um, when, you're, when you're trying to think about how many voter registrations you can get. But I agree, aim high. Right, Thanks and also much. if if you do, this is Brenda. If you do want to aim high too, is to think about is there a library event you can organize that day, like a discussion panel or a book reading or something that would bring in the populations that you're working to attract and want to register to vote. Also, so um, something that's within the services of your library already um, would be a possibility too. Right, right. Uh, another great question. Um, That was the question I thought it was. Here we go. Um, would you like us to distinguish when we're signing up as a partner between um, communications and events? So when you sign up as a partner, um, you have the opportunity to check off the boxes both um, to hold an event and to um, use your communications channels to promote National Voter Registration Day. So you can do both of those, um, and we encourage you to do both. Uh, so, so please feel free to do that. 
Um, here's another one. We're hoping to have several events throughout the week, not just on Tuesday, September 26th. Um, can we register all of our events? Um, yeah, you can absolutely feel free to use our event tool to um, register events that are on or around National Voter Registration Day um, if they are related to National Voter Registration Day. So please do feel free um, uh, to do that as well if you'd like to. Let's see. Uh, can government agencies um, register to hold National Voter Registration Day events? Um, that is a great question, and it kind of depends on what sort of agency you are. A lot of government agencies are actually required by the um, National Voter Registration Act to offer voter registration. Um, so agencies that offer um, access to um, temporary assistance for needy families or um, uh, WIC or Medicaid um, are actually required to do voter registration. So absolutely um, organizations like that can. If you're a Head Start agency, your staff cannot do voter registration on the clock. Um, but you can offer up your location um, as a place for another organization uh, to come in and set up a table and do some voter registration. Um, so generally speaking, yes, absolutely. Public libraries, um, public parks, uh, all sorts of um, uh, uh, public and government agencies can sign up to hold um, nonpartisan voter registration events. Um, there are just a couple um, exceptions having to do with um, Head Start and, and, a, and a couple of other um, uh, agencies and funding sources. But generally speaking, yes, you can do that. Is there anything that and anybody would like to add to that? Yeah, can I add one thing? This is Amber. Um, I think, you know, as a, we're a government agency, we're the elections office, and I, I, the only thing I would throw out is, you know, I think all the election officials across the country, you know, it, it's, it's a benefit to us if we can register people in advance of the election. Um, Colorado, we deliver ballots by mail, so anything we can do to kind of have that engagement to update address or get someone registered prior to us sending out the ballots, there's, you know, there's a benefit there to us from a cost perspective, and I think every election office would approach it in the same way, so I certainly think that they would want to be engaged and, and want to help um, and want to, you know, sort of share in that effort because it ultimately benefits us if we can communicate and get this work done prior to, you know, it becoming a provisional ballot or somebody trying to do it at the last minute. So I would encourage you to definitely try to partner with those, those government agencies, whether it's an election office or others that do the work. Great. Thank you, Amber. Um, we, we had a few different questions um, that sort of had to do with um, uh, partisanship in a, in a roundabout way. Um, so. We had a couple of questions along the lines of, um, you know, I'm a candidate or I work for a candidate or I'm associated with a ballot measure campaign or I'm part of a political action committee. Can I host a National Voter Registration Day event? Um, the answer is a qualified yes. Um, so if you are going to use um, uh, the National Voter Registration Day brand, so to speak, or use materials um, uh, from National Voter Registration Day, any event you have has to be absolutely strictly nonpartisan. So um, there can't be any campaign literature. There can't be anything about anything that appears on the ballot um, anywhere uh, near where you're, doing, where you're doing voter registration. So anything um, connected to anything that appears on the ballot um, would not be a, an appropriate mix for a National Voter Registration Day event. It really is um, focused on voter registration. You, of course, are, are free to tell people you know, when elections are coming up, how they can get more information. Um, you know, if you have a, um, something from your uh, County Board of Elections about um, when the primary election is, or when um, uh, the general election is, or what the requirements are for voter ID. All of those sorts of things are, are perfectly allowed, but you cannot um, 
wear campaign pins or hats or t-shirts or have any sort of anything that associates you with a candidate um, or anything else that appears on the ballot. So I, I hope that that um, clears up some of those questions. Is there anything that you wanted to add to that, Brenda? Um, yeah, I just wanted to just reiterate uh, two, two important things. One is that you can um, go to our website, the Partners website, it's the Partners tab, and then Partner Toolkit, and there is where there is voter registration drive rules by state. And so since every state is so different, I think it's really important to read through those and uh, be able to get the nuances additionally to Julian, everything that you just shared. Um, but one thing that you can share too is that I meant to mention this earlier is that when you do check in with your local local or county you know elections office, be sure to find out though what elections are actually on the ballot for this November. So that when people say, well, why do I need to register to vote? I you know it's not a presidential year, then you can say, oh well. Actually, this year there's three city council seats open, and this is what city council does. And oh, we're voting on the sheriff. And oh, we're voting on a local measure around water use. Um, you can find that stuff out from your local board of elections, which then can be part of the education process. So that is allowed and actually very encouraged for you and your volunteers to know so that um, the folks you're talking to and your volunteers too understand the importance and the context of doing this in 2017. Great, thank you. Um, so we'll do a couple more questions. I know we're, we're almost at a quarter past the hour, so I uh, uh, appreciate um, your willingness to, to hold on with us while we, while we answer a few more of these questions. Um, one person was wondering, are the um, communications toolkit and organizers toolkit available even if you don't register as a partner? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, you can go to the nationalvoterregistrationday.org website, and under the partner drop, drop down, there is an item called Partner Tools, um, and all of our materials are accessible to anyone there. Um, we do encourage you to sign up as a partner um, in part so that we can support you, but also because it helps to um, um, promote and, and lift up the holiday. Um, and so we hope you will you will do that. And the same goes for registering your event on the um, event registration page. We hope you'll uh, take advantage of doing that, um, so that other people in the area um, who want to do voter registration work can connect with you, so that people who want to register to vote can connect with you, uh, and so that we can lift up your efforts um, when we're reporting about National Voter Registration Day after the event. All right. Um, what if I want to change the number of people that I think will be able to register based on what we've talked about today? Um, so yeah, you can. If you need to um, alter details um, about your, uh, whether you're doing an event or promoting NVRD with your communications or um, registering 50 people or 100 people, um, you can send all of, uh, of those kinds of updates and inquiries to info at nationalvoterregistrationday.org, uh, and we can update that information um, for you. Or um, you can go the uh, slightly more laborious route of re-registering as a partner, um, and whatever you register the second time around will overwrite what you, um, what you entered the first time around. If you just have a couple of details that you want to change, yeah, please feel free to just email us. Um, those changes uh, to info at nationalvoterregistrationday.org. Um, was there anything you wanted to add to that, Brenda? Um, no, no. I mean, and if you have questions that you can't find on the website, um, you know, Julian shared the info at nationalvoterregistrationday.org. Um, but so yeah, so but after you check those resources out, definitely feel free to contact us if you need to. Um, so we have a couple of questions here that I think are, are questions that are better addressed um, in, ne in ne next week's um, webinar on, on holding a voter registration drive. So if you have questions about, um, you know, how should I keep track of how many registrations I'm actually collecting? Um, uh, how do I stay in touch with my volunteers? Um, 
how do I find out what the requirements are for people um, helping other people register to vote in my state? Um, we'll talk about um, all of those details at ne next week's um, webinar. So please do um, sign up for uh, that webinar. And I'll include a link to sign up for that webinar in the follow-up email that I send to all of you. So you'll be able to just click on that and, and sign up for the, for the next webinar as well. Right. Julian, can I just address one other question that's, that's in here that I think is a common question that doesn't have a concrete answer, but it says, can you share what events, actions have yielded the greatest results in past years? And that's, that's a harder question to answer because every community is different and every organization is different. And so not to sort of, well, I, if I was trying to size up the question, I wouldn't have answered it, but I think the important thing is, is to think, who is it you're trying to engage? What's going to speak to them? And then what's the prep work you need to do to um, get, the, get the people that you want registered to vote there? And if this is your first year, um, it might be you know, some trial and error, testing and figuring it out. Um, the great thing is, is that there's an election in 2018 and there's elections in 2019. And we're going to keep getting, you're going to keep figuring it out more and more by your community. Um, and and see if there's others in your community that make that happen. So don't think that there's really not a magic sort of flip of the wand of or answer for that. It's really based on where you're at and who you're working with and um, what your some of your goals are. So um, go with your gut, really, of what you feel is going to work. That's usually the right answer. Right. So um, I think we we should probably. Um, uh, uh, call it quits um, out of respect for your time. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We have a lot of questions. The questions we were unable to answer, we will pick up again um, next week, and um, we may also answer some of those in the follow-up email that I sent to all of you. Um, so thank you for your active participation. Um, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Brenda, um, for lending us your expertise today. Uh, it was very much appreciated. And um, we appreciate you making the time to, to appear here today. Thank All right. You, um, with that, um, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and we will be in touch with you soon with a follow-up email um, following up on today's webinar. Thanks. Bye-bye.